from my laundry room studio. This is Martin Zender broadcasting to the world via the internet on the book of Revelation, one of the most misunderstood books, one of the most misapplied books. Christians everywhere apply it to themselves. Well, if they're part of the remnant of Israel, or if they have some Israel blood in them, then I suppose they would be drawn to doom and destruction and struggle and trying to overcome things and fighting your sin because Israelites love that stuff and trying to do the law under great opposition and great pressure. Ooh, that just tickles the bones of Israelites. I'm, I'm happy not to be one of those people because I'm tickled by peace, by joy, by ease. Uh, I'm, I'm tickled by by glory. I'm tickled by not having to do law. I'm tickled by the saying that all things are allowed me. I'm tickled to death by the saying um, that God has given me all things richly to enjoy, and that by virtue of Jesus Christ and not my works, I am going to be taken to heaven where there is air conditioning and where the glory is tremendous and it eclipses everything, even the greatest things on earth. And again, all this happens not because of any work on my part. So if there are any Israelites listening, there's a huge movement out there now. I'm hearing, I'm getting wind of it. My, my people are out there and they're bringing me back information to headquarters here in the laundry room saying that, Martin, there's a big movement out there now. People want to become Hebrews. Uh, they want to become Hebrews of the Hebrews. They are very interested in, um, in the ceremonies of Israel. And some of them are just, uh, they, they hate any kind of uh, sacrifices. Uh, th but this doesn't make sense. I'm hearing that people are very squeamish about the sacrifices, which I understand. I don't like to see little lambs hurt or little birdies or any kind of thing like that. Uh, not even goats and bulls. No, I, I like them. I like goats and bulls. Uh, but uh, people are being squeamish about these things and look you have to get you have to become manly if you're squeamish about the sacrifices then you also have to be squeamish about jesus christ himself because he was the ultimate sacrifice and the death of christ was ugly and yet it brought salvation for all anyway got off the topic there a little bit as is my want but uh look uh, being Israelite is no bargain. I know you think it's great because what's better than an Israelite? This is why you like it. This is why you like it. I understand why you like it. It's because it's visible. It's because everybody can see that, oh, they're an Israelite. Look, they're going to the temple. They're eating, uh, they're eating kosher foods or they're celebrating the feasts or they love the star of David. They're part of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and it's really cool. That's cool. I know how cool it is. And I know that's why you're digging it. Because it's a visible religion. It's a religion where you can distinguish yourself by outbehaving other people. Uh, and it's a religion that by observing it, you become superior to others. And I know that's really cool. And it's very attractive. It's all outward trappings. Uh, of course, the priesthood, your priesthood is beautiful. The outfits they wear are fantastic. The materials, uh, I think their underwear is made of uh, pure uh, linen that uh, really was great for you know not allowing the body to sweat. And you had those gems on the breastplate of the priest. That's fantastic. And the ceremony, my God, nobody has ceremony down like the Jews. In fact, the whole Catholic religion the whole Catholic religion is an imitation of Israelite ceremony. It's a priesthood. I'm sorry, but that's not your purview, uh, Catholics. You're usurpers. You're fakers. You're playing Israel. Oh, we have a priestly caste, and we put them in robes, and they're colorful, and they walk with great pomp and great circumstance up to the altar, and everybody loves it, and there's incense. You see, you stole that from Israel too. Israelites had the incense. They have an altar of incense in the middle partitioned place of the temple, and they had the showbread. Oh, what do you know? You have a thing with bread too. You have the host. So you've ripped off Israel. It's a shame. It's a crying shame because you're not Israel. And uh, it's, uh, but it's cool. I understand it's cool to be Catholic. You can get to wear the Jesus jewelry and the cross. I know I've been, I went through the whole thing when I was a kid. 
but I realized that there was all form and no substance, all show and no go. So I went, all show, no go, I leave. I was out of that place. So here's a better thing for those of you who are I had not planned on talking about this at all or coming over to this side of the screen. This was a new thing for me, but I really like the lighting over here. I might have to do this more often. I get to uh, lean on my hand, which I'm doing now if you're watching the laundry cam. Hadn't planned on talking about this. People wonder, Martin, why you, why have you been wearing sunglasses for the last two days or three or four days? Is something wrong with your eyes? Well, look and see. Is something wrong with my eyes? No, my eyes are as beautiful as they've ever been. I just feel like wearing uh, sunglasses. So the body of Christ, here's the problem with it. Here's where people stumble at it. It's not a system of attainments. It's not a program of works where you can outdo other people and gain salvation while they gain getting their faces rubbed in the dirt or in the case of Israel, having their bodies burned in Gehenna. That's right. That's right. There is no... There is no competition for salvation. There is no, uh, unless you overcome, you cannot be saved. That's the Israel message. Only those overcomers will eat of the log of life, the tree of life. And so it's a opportunity for you to prove yourself to God by great feats of spiritual daring do. God, of course, I'm not making fun of this. Uh, I seem to be, but... Um, God himself instituted it. But unfortunately, most Israelites don't realize why God instituted it. He instituted it so that people could struggle and struggle and struggle against God-breathed decrees and fail continuously. Uh, if you don't believe me, you have to read Romans 5.20 if you think that Paul is inspired. But now I hear some people are saying that Paul's a false prophet. Paul is a false apostle apostle how convenient is that for you if you don't like grace if you don't like a f form of belief or a system of belief if you want to call it that that eliminates your opportunity to, to prove yourself to god how convenient to just say well paul's not inspired he's a usurper he's a false prophet he shouldn't even be in the bible really mm, well uh peter acknowledges paul your man peter acknowledges Paul in Acts. Uh, he acknowledges Paul in his own letters. Uh, yes, he does. And the circumcision gave Paul the right hand of fellowship, and they acknowledged that he had a distinct message. That's your man, Peter. He's the man, the chief of your kingdom, and he says Paul is a brother. And so either Paul is the worst liar on the face of the earth, earth either he was uh, taking hallucinogenic mushrooms or smoking a lot of weed or he was inspired by God and he has a distinct message and I encourage people to grasp onto this message it's a message of pure transcendent unadulterated grace that means that you can't even sin your way out of it it is a message that makes you repose it makes you relax and it makes you give up on your own confidence that is the confidence to please god the confidence to impress god that's all gone i'm not saying as a person you don't have confidence like if you play basketball you have confidence you're going to make that shot that's fine we're not getting rid of that in your job you have confidence that you can win the deal you can win the day you can get that contract that great all that stays we're talking about the confidence the pride the arrogance that assumes that it can please God and that it can make God look down from his heavenly throne and say, hmm, Bill certainly is doing a fantastic job. I might just have to save him. He's outperforming Bill. Oh, that was Bill. He's outperforming Joe. Yes, Bill is fantastic. I love Bill. Look at him. And God calls all the angels to his side. He calls his own son and says, look at Bill down here. We gave him laws, and I believe he's doing every single one of them, all 613. Why, he's perfect. You know, I really didn't need to send a Savior for that guy because he's doing the job. Yeah, that's impossible, okay? Romans 8, 3, by works of law, no flesh at all shall be justified. Oh, there's another thing. Israelites, I know you're into the working for forgiveness, and that is part of your system. That is part of it. Uh, but here's a bad part of it, is that you have to confess your sins. As your Apostle John says, if anyone 
is faithful to confess their sins, then Jesus Christ is faithful to forgive their sins. Question, what if you don't confess your sins? I, I'm not very bright, and I know the answer to that question. They're not forgiven because forgiveness is a contingency based on your worthiness. It's based on you continuing to do those things that are required for the forgiveness. That is, at least confess. I mean, in the Catholic Church, I know how it is. We would sin like crazy, and then once a month we went to to confession. So you tried to hurry up and get all your sins over with. Uh, then you went to confession. You confessed your sins, and you had this imagine it. You imagined that the priest absolved them, and then you came out pure and feeling good. I did anyway. And then you really tried to be careful for about the, for the rest of the day. I remember walking out of confession just thinking, oh, I can't screw up. I can't screw up. I'm clean. All my sins are gone. And it's like getting a new car. And you want that car to stay just in the pristine condition. You don't want to get a scratch on it. You don't want anybody to eat and drink in your car. Get those milk duds out of my car. And then, but you get that first scratch or you get the first milk dud stain on your seat. And you all, oh, okay, that's it. So you just start sinning like crazy and look forward to the next month when you can confess your sins again. This whole system was instituted by God for the sake of frustrating people to realize that what every year we have to do this, this is crazy. And what you Israelites don't realize is that you have a high priest that says, we're not going to do this once a year. I am the final high priest. I do it once for all time. But you still have not accepted that Savior. You're still trying to produce works in the flesh. You have to cast your burdens upon him. See, that's what you have to do. Israelites cast your burdens but what I'm telling people who want to be Israelites today is you don't even have to do the legit Israel thing I mean you're doing a lot of fake Israel things you think you're pleasing God what well, you can't do that if you don't have a temple and you want to be Israelites you cannot do the law today even real Israelites can't do the law forget you pretend Israelites the real Israelites can't do it because there's no temple but what I'm telling you fake Israelites and you want to be Israelites uh, for one thing, just stop d observing any Israelite thing. You can't do it today. Just wait for your, for your Savior. As Paul says in Hebrews, he's writing to you. He's trying to help you get through this time. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. Hold fast to your expectation. Um, sit tight. Don't take the mark of the beast. Don't be mean to anybody. Don't persecute people. Don't kill any more prophets, okay? That went bad for you early in your career and your uh, history. Don't do that anymore. And um, be nice to members of the body of Christ like me. Don't look down on me like I'm some dog. I'm not. I'm actually going to a place that's higher than the earth. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's still available to you. You're not exempt from it. You can embrace this message, but to do that, you have to do what your ancestor Paul did. That is, you have to um, you have to forsake your your pedigree. You have to forsake the fact that, what is this, install an update? I don't want to install an update. Why did this screen come up? Uh, you have to forsake your pedigree. You have to do away. You have to forget obt obtaining anything by means of law, by means of commandments, any commandments, 10 commandments, or the other 603. And you have to let go of your pride, of your self-righteousness. And this is going to be very difficult for many people to do. In fact, Paul, let me give you a quick scripture verse here quick for those who are struggling. You know, some people struggle with their gender. They don't know, am I a boy or a girl? Some people struggle uh, spiritually. Am I an Israelite or am I a member of the body of Christ? Do I, do I want to do the law or do I want to be saved by complete, total grace and not have to do anything? Hmm, I don't like that really because then I can't perform, then I can't show myself against other people and like, that guy's worthy, that guy's not. Bill is great, Joe's a loser. I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to see other people getting tossed into Gehenna and smoldering. I just, and I want to stand on the rim of Gehenna watching it, knowing that I'm where I am and they're where they are because of some great work on my part. And that's all legit if you're an Israelite. But I'm saying there's a better thing. There's a higher thing. Why settle for that? But I know what your problem is deep down. It's in Romans chapter 10. I know you might not acknowledge the bringer of this message because it's Paul and you don't like Paul. Uh, but he's one of your own, and he loves you very much, Paul does. I don't know why you're so upset about him, because he loves you. 
He was one of you. Uh, so you should be happy, and he's trying to help you here, and I'm trying to help you, and I'll close with this in Romans chapter 10, if I can get it. See, my Bible's torn to shreds. Hang on, I'm going to have to hold my phone with my teeth. Hang on here. I'm going to Romans chapter 10. Uh, Romans 10, I'm going to close with this, verse 1. Indeed, brethren, the delight of my heart and my petition to God for their sake, that is, for the sake of the Jews, and even you want to be Jews. This is for you, I guess, if you want to be Jews, if you want to be Israelites, I would hope you would forsake that instead and reach for the higher thing, the body of Christ. Just accept the death, entombment, and resurrection of Christ for your sins. It's not up to you, okay? Um, for I am testifying to them that they have a zeal of God. Yes, you got the zeal down pat. You are you are kings in the zeal department, uh, but not in accord with recognition. Your zeal is not in accord with knowledge. Your, your zeal is misguided. For they, and here's the key, and I'll end with this, for they, being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own righteousness, are not subjected to the righteousness of God. So you miss the righteousness of God because you're too busy seeking to establish your own righteousness. It's like these people who put ceramic squirrels on their trees or ceramic deer in their yard, right? They put this fake wildlife, and they're, they're so enamored of it, and they stare at it. Ooh, look at the cement squirrel. Look at the concrete deer. And in the meantime, the real deer over here, the real squirrel is over here. They have this real wildlife. Why do you need Disney World wildlife? And so you're so busy admiring your own righteousness. It's like, look at our righteousness, that you're not subject to the righteousness of God. That's how, exactly what it said. Am I making it up? No, I'm quoting it literally seeking to establish your own righteousness. You are not then subject to the righteousness of God because in seeking to establish your own righteousness, you're so involved with that. There's so many steps, 10-step programs, 12-step programs, whatever you got. You're reading Leviticus. You're trying to figure out what to do. You're so busy and that God's righteousness is right around the corner, but you can't see it. The real squirrels and the real deer are right in the, the perimeter, but you're too busy staring at this concrete concoction of your own construct and pride that you can't see the truth. So I pray for all of us that any scales that are on our eyes be removed. God is able to do it, and his good time, he will do it. In the meantime, I'm a herald. I'm a herald of grace. I'm a herald of peace. I'm a herald of the conciliation, which is this, that God is now at peace with the entire world and he is presenting this peace to the world he's not upset he's not angry this is a great day uh, for salvation and i exhort you to receive that peace and then at that point you will be at peace with god and what is not to like about that